it's really different for every country. Uh, we even notice it when we're in Holland, you notice the difference between the North and the South. So that being said, in general, I think that the South American audience is like a really good audience, like really enthusiastic, really interactive, you know, singing along to the songs. And uh, yeah, we've had good experiences so far. So. Let me summarize that a bit. They're crazy. Exactly. Un poquito loco. <laughs> I think that in general it's not so much like a, a, a fixed decision, it's more that uh, when I write the lyrics I just write about well, whatever I feel like and when we started I was 17 writing the first lyrics and when you get older your world expands a little bit so obviously the songs that you write when you're that young are you know about yourself and finding your place in a world that gets bigger as you grow older so obviously you know other uh, more topics work them their way into the lyrics as well. So I think it's basically just a part of growing up. Actually, that, that went pretty gradually because we had this al first album done, Lucidity, and then our record label asked us, can you do a couple shows? And then we thought like, oh, then we need a band. So. Let's search for some people and see if we can do that. Sounds like fun. And then, yeah, it um, grew exponentially and went a little bit out of control in a positive way. And uh, it, it went very organic, very automatically. Some people said like, oh, this is well planned, a good plan. This is the first start as a project, but then pop up as a, as a band. But it, it wasn't really planned like that. It just happened like that. And yeah, so it's it's uh, it went gradually. We always still keep this guest musician element in our in our albums because we like very much to to work have a with other people and have surprising uh, working relationship, working results, and uh, yeah. So I think things are uh, pretty organic how they yeah. went. Yeah. I don't think that I know any band that identifies themselves as a female front of metal band. I do think that it's uh, exactly that it, it's mostly uh, uh, several media putting that label or even fans putting that, that label on the music itself. But like you said, it only basically it only says the gender of one person in the band, which is not even I mean, it can be a defining factor for the sound of the voice. But it's not even a defining factor for the music itself. So, um, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't say much. I'm not bothered by it, but I think it's a very it's it's a bit of an annoying term. It's you know, uh, people have the urge to to etiquette uh, things, and so I understand that and categorize, and you know uh, that that that's a part of it. Uh, for me, actually. I was in a female fronted metal band for almost 20 years right now. Uh, first with Interpretation and, and now Delane. And yeah, At least you add metal to it. Then, then you already have more of a picture of what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, you know, so for me, it's it's n it's not even it's not even popping to mind. It's it's it could also have been that when 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 starting Delane that I didn't met Charlotte and I met a guy uh, who was singing. So. To me, it's yeah. It has no no particular meaning. It's the, more the person who, and it can be a, a female or it can be a male who uh, is the front person of, of the band. And uh, yeah, I, I don't. Uh, yeah, I mean, in the end, there is probably uh, some symphonic metal bands with a male singer who are more comparable to us than a lot of. Female fronted bands, uh, which are put in the same category. I, I totally agree with that. Absolutely. And also, we, of course, for me, it was a bit of an annoyance that people put a label on us. Oh, yet another one. Hey, I did this already for for years. Uh, I started in in 95, 96 with this. So, and then I'm like the guy who starts yet another one. Yeah, sorry, but <laughs> that's not fair. <laughs> I'm yet another one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a 
been different with most of the albums because we found ourselves in different places. Like uh, in this uh, cycle, for example, we're doing a lot of touring. I don't think we've ever been so busy touring while making an album. So uh, that means that now we really have to start really early. Like we're planning our record for like somewhere halfway next year, but we're already having like a bunch of the songs because, you know, we need to do everything like in between tours. And if we want to keep enough time for you know the whole recording and production process then the writing has to happen now it, it's a it's a luxury problem uh, we have so much offer so much shows going on and yeah you know the southern american tour south american tour wasn't planned at all uh so uh, we, <laughs> yeah, we, we did we did a tour at nightwish and sabaton in in north america and then i heard that they're gonna do south america and said hey Let's uh, let's go along if that's okay with you guys. And then fortunately they liked it. We're really um, yeah really friends with Nightwish and uh, really uh, fortunate uh, that. So uh, it's a uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you. <laughs> 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 well. My relationship with Nightwish goes way back. Uh, I, I discovered them when I was still with Intemptation. We received a lot of sampler CDs with a lot of different bands with one song on it. And they immediately caught my attention. They had this song called Elven Puff, that was from their first record. And immediately it, 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 it was uh, very, uh, for me, like, hey, what's this? And then uh, I started delaying uh, with Charlotte and, uh, and we were also busy with guests and I love Marco's voice. And um, yeah, we think it blends well with, with our music. And so uh, we met, I met Marco in 2004 and uh, recorded in Finland in 2005. And uh, yeah, he, he went back in, in different albums and uh, yeah, I'm just, when it comes to Nightwish, I'm a fanboy, so to say. Uh, I'm, I'm not fan for with a lot of bands, but Nightwish is for me really an exception. And um, and then I, yeah, I discovered that, that, that Tuomas is a fan of Delane. And yeah, that, that for me is it's fantastic. Um, so, and then, uh, yeah, they asked us to tour with them. And uh, yeah, that's how it's grown. And so it's, it's years, uh, a relationship which, which is building up for years already. That's a good question. Um, I, I remember the very moment that I heard for the first, very first time about what happened to Sophie, and uh, it was through um, through a video that kind of spread through the community at that point. And it was already a few years later when we were writing "We Are the Others" and we're considering whether this story, which is, I mean, it's a heartbreaking story. Um, whether this this would fit the picture and the first thing that we did when we when we had the idea and wrote the words down was we have to contact her family we've got to contact you know the people who were close to her because it's easy to write about your own feeling or like abstract concept but this is a this is an actual girl with an actual family and friends that are still mourning her so um i gave them a call and uh, the, the lucky coincidence had it that the girl who answered working at the Sophie Lancaster Foundation was actually a fan who had been to our shows at previous occasions. And they were, they were excited about the idea of the song. They were also uh, very excited about approaching it with uh, positivity. I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty heavy message and there is a lot of ways to go around it. You know, you can be preachy or you can be kind of celebrating of everybody's uniqueness rather than and and they were really all for that you know the thing that they do they they go around the country um, educating people you know uh, targeting both potential bullies and potential victims they work with the police uh, on on all these kind of hate crimes actually because that's what they are and um, and they do this with such an incredible force and, and positivity. Like Sophie's mom is giving speeches daily at schools about what happened to her daughter. And this is such an amazingly strong thing to do. 
uh, we had the pleasure of meeting her for the very first time not too long ago, and it was a, a really, um, I think it was a really emotional moment for me because we've been working on this for uh, a long time, and you know, always happy to, uh, yeah, to 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 tell people about the the work that they are doing because I think it's uh, it's it's amazing, and and I, I I'm just grateful that you know we can speak about this and that people actually listen. Well, I'm always very hesitant when it comes to, um, how do you say, to politics and music. And of course, this is not entirely politics. This is this is more an ethic, ethic subject. And of course, it has some, some, uh, how do you say? I, I don't want to be the the um, uh, moral person. I just want to make beautiful music. But um, Charlotte always writes the lyrics, not me. And we always talk about it together, um, because of course, the whole thing together we radiate. We exactly. we we radiate together, so it's important that you ha you are really uh, as one in that. So uh, in this case, it it was different for me, and and it was a very clear message, and and yeah, and it's it's also an honor that you uh, are able uh, to do that, and also that the people. What, what it's, the story is about that they are also involved in it. It makes it really, really special. And they they uh, visited us when we made a video uh, shoot of uh, of We Are the Others in the Netherlands. And um, this year, uh, where Charlotte referred to us, we 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 played at a festival in the in the UK, where they had a stage called the Sophie Sophie Lancaster stage. So so it was a full circle, and we did that show. Uh, and we we did this song on that stage, and her mom was present, and her family friends were present, and that's yeah, that's 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 so special. So it's uh, yeah, it's a very special uh, special thing. I like to work at night, and this saves my life. Uh, yes, yes, sometimes. No, but this is this is the thing. I I always like to to you know, do a lot of things and uh, uh, actually for writing, especially for writing fiction, the night hours are the best because everyone's asleep. There's no calls or emails coming in. <laughs> and uh, this, I, I think that 50% of the work was probably done at night. So yeah, it's a lifesaver. Thank God for nights and zombieing. Actually, no, I, I found him in real life. Uh, we met him at uh, Wacken Open Air. Uh, yeah, they, we just performed and they were just about to perform. And we actually met because we were watching a, a band that's from our, our hometown, which is a brass band doing classic heavy metal songs. And we were watching together and we got to talk and uh, we kept in touch. And after a while, you know, we re we wrote the song and yeah, it seemed like a perfect fit. This song had written his name all over it, uh, Where's the Blood, it's called. And uh, yeah, so, and he was really up to it, fortunately. So it was uh, really, really cool. Yeah. You notice that uh, it's, it's, it becomes um, easier and easier. And I, uh, this is my favorite part about social media too, because for example, the, uh, I use Instagram a lot for following um, uh, visual arts and Glenn Arthur we found online and this was just a, a matter of blogging and sending some messages through social media and that's how we got in touch with him. And uh, so it, it does offer a very nice platform to communicate with people really directly both uh, people who follow you and like your music so both uh, both the fan side but also you know uh, your your own fangirl side. It's it's very nice to get in touch with you know artists that could be interesting to collaborate with and uh, yeah. It's really good because I'm so unbelievably bad with social media. So uh, really happy that Charlotte is so good at it. <laughs> it's, it's a bad addiction, but I just keep telling myself no. It's good for you know it's good for our job that I'm addicted to it. So I'm not going to do anything about it. <laughs> Well, more playing, more albums, and um, 
yeah, it, it goes really, really well. We have a really good team, really nice people together. We, we get along really well. And um, thanks to the fans supporting us, we can do this. And we're getting more and more of them, which is good. So, um, yeah, we're really we're building up uh, at the, the several territories in the States, in Canada, and now in South America, Europe. We do a headline tour when we come back. And, um, yeah, and we keep writing writing albums, uh, making albums, which I find the most fun part of the whole thing. So it's, uh, I like to play live, uh, but I love making an album. So it's, uh, we keep doing that, I think.